Greetings family, this is Bomani Tayamba and welcome to Pan-Africanism Towards Nationhood and I'm here with my good brother uh, Baka Thomas and uh, we're here to get into some incredible subject and our main subject tonight is Africa is the black man's paradise if you build the infrastructure or Africa is paradise if you build the infrastructure so we definitely want to get more into that and uh, what we're basically saying in general, and we'll expand on it, is that um, Africa is Africa. But if you want certain things, you must also be willing to build it. That way you can have your comfort, your peace of mind, and all the things that you want to enjoy. Uh, we definitely understand the life of paradise when you do tourism, which is always awesome in Africa. Uh, but at the same time, too, when you're trying to live, do business, retire, then that's a whole different game. Uh, you find out that, um, you know, you want certain level of comfort that you're used to, and you have to build it. That way you can enjoy it. So no free lunch, no easy situation. And then other thing is, um, you know, if you want the, the better parts of town and the better better parts of whatever part of Africa you go into, uh, you have to be willing to pay for those nice housing communities that uh, you know, that have backup power, that have the things in place uh, that you're more used to. So one way or another, you have to do it. Either you pay for it or you work with your brothers and sisters to build it so you can enjoy it in Africa. Yes, my good bro brother, Baka Thomas. Uh, how about you just go ahead and introduce yourself to our people and then let me know what you feel about as far as us talking about uh, Africa is the black man's paradise. So Africa can be paradise if we build it. Uh, yes. Thank you, my brother. And um, yes, um, my name is Baka or Bakaya, and uh, I've been traveling back and forth to Ghana for uh, quite some time. And um, yes, Ghana and Africa is paradise for the black man. And um, it's also our home, you know, our ancestral home. So uh, I'm looking forward to building in West Africa, uh, specifically Ghana. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel. You can find me at Bakaya Travel Channel. That's B-A-K-A-Y-A-H Travel Channel. So uh, subscribe and like when you get the chance. And um, I'm going to be building my channel. This gracious brother, Bomani, uh, I've been checking out his channel for years. And uh, man, just amazing. And I've seen the growth and the positivity and just the uh, love for the continent and for the people. And yes, my brother, you are 100% correct that um, if we are going over to West Africa, we're going to have to build and we're going to have to have uh, our homes built and um, buy land. And we're going to have to make paradise uh, for ourselves. You know, we're going to have to build it. And uh, it can be done. You're going to have to go over with a little bit of money and, of course, um, network with some good people over on the land. And if you can do that, you're going to be successful there and um, you will have paradise in Africa. So, yes, brother, I take my hat off to you. Uh, I just can't wait to build up my channel and get to the level of YouTube success that you're at and uh, just really informing the people, you know, you're just, you, you do that effortless, effortlessly, excuse me. Um, so it's a beautiful thing. So just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, like I said, you inspire me and, uh, and what a journey it's been. And brother, I just take my hat off to you and uh, I love your channel. I love the videos and the content. And it's just so positive, brother. And um, I'm just uh, ready to build my channel up and really get back over to the continent uh, full time. So that's my um, mission and goal at this time. But brother, hey, man, what can I say? Um, Africa for the Africans, brother. Yes, sir. Africa for the Africans. When you record those videos in Africa, you just got to share and upload them. I mean... Uh record them in the mindset of that uh i'm going to share this piece of paradise i'm going to share this connection i'm going to share this experience with the rest of the world but uh yes we have a lot of videos on uh, from 2007 to now 2024 the last 17 years uh, we have 4400 videos and that covers uh 
literally uh, 10 to 12 different countries in Africa based on our experience. And then whatever we do here in Georgia and other places, but it's primarily um, videos of Africa and a whole lot of preparation. And I just show you one of my best playlists. You know, once you go to our YouTube channel, uh, you have playlists and, you know, you have shorts and you have regular videos. When you click on regular videos, you'll see just a bunch of cultural videos. You click on shorts, you'll see more of the, the nightlife party videos. But then you click on playlists, you'll see that full content of videos that I showed you. Uh, Social Nightlife After Dark with Bomani. And that is 76 videos. And uh, like the first 20 or 30, very short and just right to the point with great music. And just, you know, it's just showing a different side of things and the energy and just some of the cool sisters that, you know, we you know we have connected with and we just just having a great time. And uh, some footage requires you to be 18 or over. So if you see that, that means, <laughs> of, of, you know, you can say that it's X-rated or it's uh, for mature adults, uh, which is, uh, you know, we're grown folks and we deal with grown folks business. So it's what it is. Uh, we can't just show you uh, historical museums and things like that all the time. You know? Uh, so we show you basically there's no weakness to our game. We you know we have showed uh, different. We have shown the world all aspects of what we do in Africa. Even you know like I just uploaded some of the last set of uh, Liberia uh, business and investment conference videos, and then the ones I forgot I'm going to be uploading. So you're delving into all aspects of life, business, investment, tourism, networking, social energy. Um, you you name it. So every time we go to different continents we show different videos and so now that I have I have a whole lot of brothers always asking me uh where's all the videos what y'all do at nightlife I tell them a lot of times man I'm not trying to record no videos trying to you know it's like we're just having a great time but you know I've made an exception over the last two three years and I've shot some videos you know very short videos just to show some of the brothers uh basically uh you know <laughs> what it looked like at nighttime um, nothing different from where they are if you're in Atlanta if you're in New York you're in Miami it's, it's probably more you know fantastic than what we show you but what we're showing you is our experience and what we see in africa and you know from the beautiful sisters twerking dancing just having fun smiling you know just uh showing you that energy and that's what we have done the last 20 years uh traveling to africa from 2004 to now 2024 show you know starting off with the senegal documentary uh in march of 2004 then the egypt documentary april of 2004 set it off for both countries and then, you know, from there on, it's just been nothing but documentation. We go all the way back from when you used to have VHS tapes, you know, and I've, so even the VHS tapes are converted to DVD and from the DVDs, you can wow. digital files, which you upload online. So my oldest video that I have right now currently is Egypt, April, 2004. I didn't bother uploading the Senegal one. That was uh, more raw material, but Egypt is incredible. Six hours of documentation from Cairo to Aswan. And then now when we go back in November, we're going to take it to a whole different level because guess what? We have 8K uh, camcorders, uh, which is which shows you the highest definition to where when you go and watch a TV, you feel like you're in the game. You feel like you're there. You know? And these are all free documentation. And what I've done over the period of time now is there's more playlists. So you go to Ghana, you go to Senegal, and then you're just showing videos from you leaving here in Georgia and then getting to the airport, getting to the country, and you're just showing people, just giving them a feel of everything. And then outside of that, when people ask me, how do you get passports? How do you get visas? How do you get started? Then I'll tell them, hey, that's when you call me for consultation and we'll get you ready. And I'm always helping people do like Ghana visas or whatever visas. If you travel with me and you're paying for a tour, we'll help you with that, uh, with you know all the consultation, those things are in the price anyway. But if you're looking to just do a solo trip or you need help, uh, that's what we do, family. There's no one else that I can think of that knows more about Africa than myself. I've been there 20 straight years and sometimes three, four countries. So I think the most countries I've ever traveled to one time in Africa is probably about five to, about five countries uh, in a year. You know, like example, um, during, the, during the so-called COVID era, um, you know, you're talking about Senegal, Gambia, Tanzania, Ghana, South Africa. That's five countries right there. <clears throat> taking from you know, coast to coast so uh we don't let anything stop us and um you know we're some of the people that's uh, been around from the beginning of this uh youtube era and i've just shown people this incredible things man but that's what we do good at uh, we shoot videos edit videos create different video production and bring africa directly to you where you can see it in your home you know and it's 
like I mentioned to you, family, no lim no limitations. The only thing is you may see more videos dealing with the African Holocaust and the Black African struggle um, right. based on history and places, you know, and history based on places also. But beyond that, um, you know, which is very important, which is probably the most important thing, because we need to know who we are, where we came yeah. from, what's been our struggles, who oppressed us, who have set up a neo-colonialism system. And, you know, we need to know about these things and not to letting people feel that anything should stop them. But it's like, in order for you to progress uh, from where you, you know, where you came from to where you're going, you know, you have to acknowledge these things. You have to embrace it. So I'm always encouraging those of us who travel to Africa with us to open their minds uh, to you know the history and the culture. And uh, one thing about me, I'm going to take you someplace of struggle. If I take you to South Africa, you're going to go to Soweto and you're going to go to Langa and you're going to learn about the struggles in those communities. If I take you to Ghana, you're going to be at El Mino or Cape Coast, Holocaust Dungeons. You're going to be there at the Ancestral Bath and you're going to be there at the most incredible tour site that we have on all of our tour schedule, um, right. which is Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. You know, we take you to Tanzania, you're going to learn about the East African slave trade, you know. Uh, so okay. no limitation. And then, you know, like well, I just showed my brother, you love them party videos, right? And as see, <laughs> man, you're going to make me a passport, bro, man. <laughs> Remember, they, they called us that already, man. I yeah. saw a couple of uh, comments on one of the videos we made like a year ago. And they said, oh, you guys passport, bros. Yeah, people <laughs> said you know, if anybody is doing those things, it's people like ourselves that's been, done it for a yeah. Time, but yeah. a lot of times, you know, we just kept it real clean to where it was. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. But I'm telling people that only difference is that some of those videos weren't recorded. And if they were recorded, they weren't put up online. But, right. but the, the goal of us being in Africa is to literally enjoy all aspects of Africa. You oh, know, yeah. Like my good brother, Dr. Khaled Muhammad said, when he was in Senegal, he wanted to see all aspects of Senegal. He wanted to see morning, night, noon. He was wanted to just take it all in. Yes, you know? sir. And that's yes, people that they should do certain things. Now I tell people straight up, people like myself, I'm a single man. And so whatever you see is what you see. Uh, um, yeah. um, it opened me up to literally just, you know, because brothers are going to talk to you when, you know, you go to places, you know, brothers, they're going to have the brothers conversation. They're going yes, to they're gonna say, yo, what's up with the honeys? That's that's what you, you're going to, brother, you're going to get that every time if you ever go anywhere. And then you oh, just, yeah. Uh, talking about a country to brothers they're gonna always ask you those questions so the best oh, yeah. thing i was like you know well i can show you some highlights you know we shoot some sh nice short videos us in the club socializing us just hanging out and having a good time and you know so some of the brothers want to see how some of the sisters look they want to see how they move what's they flow their vibes and so on and you know that's what we do we show you all aspects of africa because i'm telling people when it comes to community development and investment and things like that we're there and we you know when we talk about you need a proper consultation so you don't make bad decisions and don't get connected to the right, the wrong people, and then connect to the right, and then get connected to actually the right people you need to meet. We have you, you know, we got you, you know. So I'm always telling whoever, whatever you're looking to connect and experience in Africa, just reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. Even when people travel, I'm like, let me know if there's anything you want to do. If you're looking for a wife, a husband, if you're looking to just, just stay busy for 12 days and you just enjoy every single point of the country, all the great food. And, you know, the great energy, it's it's there. Um, and so we get to the point where, uh, you know, we love Africa so much because we spend so much time and money in Africa. But then when it comes to living and doing business, that's when you have to take your game to another level. That's right. That's right. More of your brothers and sisters from the diaspora to say, hey, let's put this together and let's, let's build over here in, in, in this town and let's work with the local uh, people and let's build something to where we can have more of our brothers and sisters come and be comfortable and have what they need. And it's something that can work. It's not the easiest thing. But then again, uh, the situations that we have to deal with in America is is it's not the easiest thing. You know, we just we deal with what we have to deal with. But at the same time, too, you know, when you're getting up every day and you're going out there in a plantation and you have to deal with all of these, you know, from the race soldiers uh, to, uh, you know, to, you know, to the. You know, what we call them uh, earlier, you know, the, the house Negroes, <laughs> the house Negroes that's always out there. Ooh, oh, man. They're trying to be the representation of uh you know of you know well we we call it basically they, they become they become the leadership of white supremacy. They could become the leadership of the things that uh, they had issues with. But now the now the you know, now the boss man gave you a position and then puts you 
in charge of all these other Negroes. So now you feel like you're the head Negro in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's sad, man. It's that's sad. That's have to deal with and things like that. So uh, you, you're dealing with you're dealing with a rigged system, you know. And then right. you in Africa, you're dealing with tribalism. So I'm saying it's it's you know it's not. You know, you're not escaping from a situation and going to a better situation. But what you can do, like we talk about, Africa is what? Paradise. If we work yeah. together and build what we need. Like example, right. our town, um, uh, Jahadi, uh, where we're building our Black Star Pan-African community. We get the right investors. They build factories. We get the right other investors. They build resorts. They build a level of tourism because, and then also build aspects of what people need uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Because when you're building the, the town, just like any other town that's here, uh, you're, here, you're here in Georgia with me. Once you leave outside of Atlanta, you go east, west, north, south, you get tons of community. And then in those communities, they have the infrastructure in place. They have all the shops, the business that people need. Mm. So those business uh, that comes into the town, they're going to, you know, it's an incentive for them because now you have a town of people that need your services, that needs, um, need the, the, the things that you provide as a business, you know, from the materials to, uh, to every aspect of life, you know, the food, the social life. And then, you know, we're talking about building a town and we're talking about beach. So you're talking about villas and what we love to do, like in Jamaica or in like uh, Tanzania, or I should say more specific Zanzibar is beach parties, beaches, the beaches, beach party. Like I like pool parties, but pool parties is a notch down from beach party and beach right. parties is on another level. Yes, sir. For those who have never been on beach party, you know, you should see us doing um the COVID nineteen era. No lie, November twenty twenty. We're in Tanzania, and we were on the beach. It was about a thousand people on the beach, and uh, I, you know, great thing for us. And you know, me and my whole group, we had we had uh, reservations right there at that hotel. Uh, so our beach party was complimentary. Man, I was like, that's how they do it in Africa, and I was like, I gotta show folks it. So you know. Naturally, all these videos are also, you know, there. And as a matter of fact, I have to put some of those videos uh, from that beach party on that playlist. And as, as I figure out more videos that I've recorded in the past, I'm going to keep putting them on that playlist and then create that playlist the way I'm just showing you Africa after dark with Bomani. Uh, I mean, having this great time, fun, excited, and completely safe. Uh, and you're just hanging out with cool people. Uh, so that's how we're doing it, brother. We're just building it up strong and uh, just appealing to more of us to come to Africa and enjoy life. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to get more brothers away from uh, is is to get away from that South America life, uh, whether it's the Colombia, the Brazil, or even even in uh, the Caribbean islands, the Dominican right. Republic. Well, you know, we we you know we love Dominican Republic. Uh, not saying much about any of those countries, but it's like trying to get more brothers to embrace the beauty of oh, Africa. Yeah. And Africa. one thing I can tell you, yeah. brother, I've been on, I've been traveling Africa for 20 years. At no point yeah. in my entire 20 years, I felt unsafe at any point. I felt like my life, uh, my, my associates, my members, my business people were at jeopardy. Right. Now, the difference I would say between the African continent, um, you know, robberies and people taking advantage of you happens everywhere. Right. So, but if somebody, you know, gets you for something, it's not much of anything. You know, and that's what I can say, you know, if anybody ever say, well, I went there and uh, s some people you know, took my money or whatever, you know, I'd rather for somebody to take some small amount of money than to take my life. And that's mm. the that I have with Brazil and Colombia. I'm not saying that it happens often, but I, you hear too many stories. And me as a brother, brother, one of the most important thing I got, you know, is to make sure I look out for my brothers and protect them. So yeah. you went to Brazil, I told I was telling folks, you know, that we have to move in a unit in that kind of military style, move in a unit and look out for each other. Um, and then, you know, and you, you have to keep that accountability effect. And that's the same place anywhere else. But when you hear about the stories of th bad things happening to brothers, foul play and stuff like that, it doesn't come from Africa. You know, like I say, you may get, you know, you may get shaken down for some business investment money and things like that. But I don't hear about you know, I can't account for any of my brothers. I said, you know, they went out with a sister next, thing you know, you know, they're being stronged up, you know, or being forced to give account numbers and things like that. I'm right. not saying things that don't happen, but if it do happen, it's very small. So what do you want to trust? Would you want to trust going to Brazil, black man out there or, or go to Colombia or coming to the African continent and, you know, where we have a great time and we embrace the culture. And then realistically, I'm not saying that our people in Brazil and Colombia 
are not connected to us because those are our people that's you know, the transatlantic European slave trade affected all of this America area yeah. from right. the furthest part of North America to the furthest part of uh, you know South America to you know the yeah. central part of you know the Americas and the Caribbean island all of that was affected not one portion of this entire area wasn't affected so we have our people everywhere but it's like the mindset is a little bit different and then you know you have people who's always pushing some countries like Brazil and um, Colombia for the wrong reasons. Like when you right. hear us talk about Africa, you have no one could ever say, oh, all Bumani talk about is women and talk about, you know, past bro, bro stuff uh, in Africa. You know what I mean? If you hear yeah. me talk about those things, it may be about five to 10%. You know? That's right. You know, so you live, you're, you're, you're connected into more of a balanced society and a more of a society yeah. that you belong and you're connected to. And I'm telling right. you, family, uh, you, you you, you you get out there and you just you enjoy yourself and and not I wouldn't advise people to go anywhere alone period but you know when I'm in Ghana or wherever or whatever country it just be a bunch of us it's just me and my crew so, so, you know we have some of my local guys with me and some of the people that have traveled with me and we just are all out there and sometimes it's about six seven brothers out there you know ain't nobody bothering you you're six and it's, you know you're not we're not a bunch of small guys we just and we roll in a unit uh, and we look out for each other and we good and so. That's what I can say about as far as just not having any issues on the continent um, and yes. making sure your life is safe. So uh, definitely want to encourage more of the brothers to just say, you know what, I'm going to step my game up. I'm actually going to get a visa. And instead of going down to Colombia, going down to Brazil or the Dominican Republic, I'm going to come to Bomani, to Ghana, Tanzania, South Africa, Kenya, you know, or whichever country we have. Because um, Egypt. The only country that I would say that uh, is not going to be as much excitement like that is the Arab nations. Uh, you know, I've been to, I just came back from Morocco a few months ago. Um, great country, um, great infrastructure, but the country is boring. You know what I mean? And some people may say, well, the only reason you, you say the country is boring because people like yourself are sinners that like to do all kind of partying and enjoying stuff. And I'm like, yeah, what's the point of me going places where I can't enjoy the fullness of it? You know what I mean? And that's what I love about the other. That's why I don't really deal with you know some of the Arab nation countries. It's just it's just too much restrictions on my fun and happiness and partying and and things like that. Um, I res do I respect them for their safety and organization? Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, too, some of them places some weird things go. It's just more in a private setting. So sub-Saharan Africa will always be paradise for us. And I just named some of the countries: family, Senegal, Tanzania, Ghana. Uh, yeah. Kenya, uh, South Africa, and uh, the videos I show you was from th those countries there where, you know, we just stay in a club and we're having a good time recording and no problem. Right. So, yes, but I said a lot, man. I know you have a lot on your mind uh, on what I just said about um, the, the Americas compared to Africa. Oh, yeah. Well. And then the women yeah, in Africa, Africa are finer and they're more, you know, they're more natural you know oh, I mean? yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I plan on getting a wife. I plan on getting a wife over there for the, you know, so um, I encourage our brothers to go over and, um, you know, you can find you a good wife there. You know, um, it's a different culture. You know, the women cater to the men there. Yeah, you so like it's that, not right? like the United <laughs> States. Oh, I love that. Like it's that. not like the United well, States. Well, it's totally different. Anyway, you're not like a new generation of men that. There that, you go. That's there you go, brother. Excuse I'm very mature, and I'm used to having it a certain way. You're and a, um, you're in a woman going out five times a week. That's some new generation stuff. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So, exactly. Exactly. I mean, since there's no wifey in here, you know, I, I do my traditional cooking and get you know get my chef on and things like that. And you know, a friend of mine came through and was like, "The place is clean." I was like, "Wait, which which woman was in here cleaning the place?" I was like, "There's no woman in here cleaning the place." I was like, "I'm a professional businessman. I need my place to look organized. Just like my car out there's clean." Maybe an older vehicle, clean and you know, and you know, a friend of mine was asking about my haircut. I was like, I was like, you know, I roll, man. I gotta look professional. I go to people home and I do all kind of technology and different business at their homes and everything. I gotta look, look fresh and professional, and that's it. But you know, it, it'll be always nice to have a queen with you where you know you you take turns doing things. You know, you know. So hey, that's, that's what it's all about. And that's what I love about Africa. You know, I mean, you meet a woman and you're in a certain situation. That woman is, a, you know, is a it's, it's, it's an addition to your life to where yeah. now you are, you know, you're sharing yeah. different things and uh, you're looking out. Uh, like some people may think there's an issue with cooking. There's not, I mean, I, I enjoy going out just like the next person, but uh, trust me, 
one of the favorite things I used to do, man, is you know candlelight dinners. You know, you cook some nice gourmet Jamaican food, and you just get a nice date, and then you know her vibing, chilling, sipping on some wine, and enjoying it, and things like that. And that's fine from my from point of view, but you love to see a woman step her game up, and yeah, and you know, and do those things. And you know, you take turns looking out for each other, take turns. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Life. It's not about a situation where. Oh yeah. You you expect a woman to just be in your house cooking and cleaning like she's some slave, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. right. Like we but, live in a modern day society where, you know, it's it's fine to have you know a man out there doing all the work and everything, but uh, you know, you people like myself encourage more of a balanced society. You know, what I mean, if, if both of us are bringing an income and both of us are taking care, you know, children, family, homes, and things like that, you have a more of a balance to where you know because you don't ever want someone else to feel a certain way because you know we're dealing with a modern generation so women may right. take certain things a certain way so you know you're encouraging everybody to bring some cash to the table because when it's time to vacation and get away and you want to get on that cruise ship you want to get on that jet plane you know what i'm saying the cash flow is good um oh yeah oh yeah and in africa if you just you know you meet a traditional woman that's willing to take and do traditional things and um and be more of that balance i think that's absolutely uh fine and so when I think about Africa, you have, you know, you have the benefit of that world. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you're a person like myself who build family business, then you know, next thing you know, your wife is working for the empire, the enterprise. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you're building more of that balance. You know? That's right. And, uh, That's right. One of the last things you need is, is a woman who's calling herself a boss bee and thinking that she's a <laughs> that Oh, none of that, bad. brother. None of that. Or none of that. Foolishness to where... You as a man, and then you, you're supposed to be a castrated man. You don't have any balls. You don't have any nuts. You don't have any guts. You just literally just, you just, you just, you know, what's a modern day word or not really modern day word, simp, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah. The word yeah. of, you know, and yeah. some people may not like that terminology, but I mean, I call men that all the time. And there's more men I call that than anything else because some of them don't have any, you know, don't have the heart to stand up for themselves. And, you know, sometimes yeah. the person is better off to be, uh, you know, it's better off to, you know, be miserable, be miserable by yourself than to have someone else bring it and, and bring more misery to you. So it's like you, you, you talk about partnership, you talk about connecting, just like we talk when we talk about Africa is paradise. Well, why is Africa? Why is Africa paradise? Well, Africa is paradise because you can come and enjoy yourself. But how can you live that life in paradise? Well, you may want to build it. You may want to have to build the kind of house you need to be able to have all the things you need in it to provide your comfort. Uh, so. That's a good thing uh, as far as um, my um, experience in Africa, this uh, literally seeing that it can be a black man paradise because you don't, you know, you there's a high chance that, yeah. that you're going to be dealing with is not a person that's going to be fighting you and literally destroying what you're building and jeopardizing right. and putting that's yourself right. in a vulnerable situation. Right. And the reason why that is, it's completely because of uh, the family structure and culture. Right. You know, and then, so now here you're dealing with a situation where do you have family structure and culture? Absolutely, you have that everywhere. But but part of the the, the culture here is a culture of just a system that literally is put in place to empower women to fight against you as a man. Right. Empower right. Women to, a girlfriend, don't take this from him. You know, you're not a slave and things like that, you know. And it's like, how can that conversation come up when you as a man is out there working 60 hours a week and you're taking care of everything and that's because you need your woman to be the balance to help out with certain things, whether it's business at home or certain things at home. You know what I mean? So it's like all this, in the, I want to be independent and I don't need no man situation. I've never felt that in Africa. It's like, as a matter of fact, people be wanting to get married too quick. You hear the word, I love you too fast. <laughs> this is never a bad thing because it's better to be loved yeah. It, yeah. it's someone showing you the attention and giving that to you uh versus you know someone who's empowered by a system to, to if yeah. you say the wrong thing to them or if you don't agree to certain things to them now they can call you know they can call yeah. it call and it. excuse me I, I don't want to interrupt but th now we even have the that me too crap here in the states so you don't have that over in Africa. So you can be free. And like you said, brother, it's fr it's freedom for us. It's freedom for us. And for a brother like me, you know, I've already done the clubs. I did all that when I was young. You know my story, Bomani. I used to work in the entertainment business. So, you know, um, I did the women and all that stuff back in the day. So now my whole thing is like getting a good wife 
And Africa, brother, man, it's I like you it, said, man, we, options, have, right? we have options, brother. And then I'm not, I'm not saying that they have culture and uh, the they thing? have faith. And they, man, it's all about you. Remember I was telling you that? It's all about you. And I've dated uh, several African women. And like I said, um, the one I had a few years ago, man, this sister gave me pedicure, manicure, cook the food. It was all about me. And, um, you know, I, of course, I did my part as well. Absolutely. But it's just a whole different level. And see, Bomani, when you really, and you've done this, so I'm not talking about you, but when our people research our history and our culture, they'll find out that that's what we're about anyway. You know, um, we didn't really get to the point to where our people are now in the United States, um, you know, by accident, you know, um, it was forced on our people, you know, um, through the transatlantic slave trade and uh, the system, the system in the United States that really just, you know, man, it changed our people, you know, and our culture, but, you know, our true culture is African. You know, get a DNA test done. You know, I you know I've done mine, and it traced me back to Nigeria. So uh, I've already done the research on my people and my tribe, and you know, it's all about family. It's all about togetherness, and it's all about the man and the woman working together. You know, to achieve a common goal. It's about family under Father Yah, under God. So under Father God. So. Yes, brother, it's a beautiful thing. And to see that and to experience that and um, to come back into, you know, our true inheritance is a beautiful thing. So, um, yes, you know, um, and my heart really goes out to a lot of my brothers and sisters um, in United States that, you know, don't want to leave and are um, locked into you know, the quote unquote American lifestyle, because, you know, um, Africa just has so much to offer for our people, you know. Um, so, yes, I understand exactly what you're saying. And for me, there's no other place to travel but Africa, you know, um, that's where I'll be. And uh, that's where I'll be moving to full time soon. So, um you know, right now I'm just going back and forth, um, you know, collecting what I need, like you said, so I can go over and, you know, build and um, have a nice, firm foundation. Um, like I said, brother, we've got everything there. Everything is there, you know, for us, you know. So uh, we just have to open up our minds and our hearts, you know, to going home. And uh, if we can do that, it's going to be a great journey because um, that's our land. I'm going to continue to say that because it is, and that's where we belong. And ultimately, um, that's where I'll be. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, that's where I'll be, my brother. Yes, sir. There you go, brother. So, yes, sir, brother. But, uh, man, I'm just enjoying the journey. You know, and um, I just can't wait to get back over there full time, uh, get married and uh, just live the rest of my life uh, in peace. And, you know, like you say, brother, and like we were talking about African paradise, it is paradise for us. It is everything and, and even more the land of milk and honey. You know, um, we're very deep people. And uh, that's why, you know, we go through what we go through in uh, the states, because they know that we're deep people. We're a royal people. We have a royal heritage and um, we have an inheritance and it's not here in America. It's in Africa. So if we're going to come into our true inheritance, we're going to have to go home, you know, and if we just want to stay on the plantation <laughs> called, uh, you know, the U.S., then, you know, that's cool. Hey, more power to you. 
but um you know my people my crew my network um we're going back home we're headed back to the continent to live and to build and um to reclaim a heritage that was stolen from us it was stolen but now um praise be to yah we have uh reclaimed that heritage and um it's time and you know uh brother you know you you do such a great job because like you said your channel is a lot more than just um you know you have a variety but <clears throat> you do so many videos on the history and heritage of our people and i really applaud you for that you know <clears throat> excuse me and uh you know, it's it's excellent. It, it's a beautiful thing and continue to do that and teach our people, you know, um, their heritage and the rich heritage and history. And um, it's amazing. So that's what we have to do. And, um, you know, once I'm able to uh, get my channel up full swing, I'm going to be doing that as well. Um giving our, our people, you know, our history and our culture and showing them, you know, uh, the beauty of Africa and our people, you know, because we do have options. We have options. So, um, brother, yes, you know, the journey is just beginning and I'm excited to, you know, get on here tonight and break bread with you. And, um, you just keep thinking, taking our people back over into the land and educating them and uh, showing them the beauty of Africa. Because like I say, brother, that is our home, our heritage, you know, and our future. That's our future. So um, we have to embrace that. And, um, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So yes, brother, yes. Um, so what is the next trip that you have on the itinerary? Uh, that is Egypt. And talk about next trip. Yes. Talk about next trip, family. Uh, this is our Bomani technology <clears throat> and business support incorporation. Uh, you see different names, but it's uh, all mean the same. And so all of our programs are sponsored by our Bomani Technology and providing the most excellent uh, professional and technology services that okay. you have. Sure, uh, sure. A whole lot of uh, different things that we do, and it's all up here on the uh, main menu from remote tech support, smart home automation, video surveillance, uh, home security alarm system, TV setup and mountain, <coughs> website development, uh, hosting services, and a whole lot more. So basically all the technology in your home, if you need professional people to assist you. So that's what the, the site is at. And this is what we use to power all of our movement. Um, and then, you know, we're all over the social world. So more, you know, more videos of Africa than anything else. Um, you know, there's a lot of technology videos on YouTube and so on. So don't really put much up. But uh, this is it, family. Uh, this is what we built our foundation with, uh, Bomani Technology and this is a company, the first company I've ever built and started, uh, which was in 2005. Then Africa for Africans came a year later. Yeah. And so that's our foundation. But let me switch to what we're talking about, uh, which is our Africa for the Africans tours and investments. And uh, you see some classic photos um, uh, mixed with some old and new. But this is basically 18 years of those photos. And me, uh, this is. My son right there, um, uh, myself, and, you know, you'll see this many of our travelers and this us just having a great moment. Uh, but, you know, they're photos, so we have tens of thousands of photos. Uh, so we can only put so much online. But when you scroll down, uh, as you ask about the schedule, this is our schedule right here. Egypt Roots and Culture Tour, November 20th to December 2nd. Then South Africa, December 24th to January 4th. Uh, so that will close out this year because we just get, came back in April from Liberia and Morocco and then Ghana in July. Uh, so that's three countries right there. And then the next two will make it five. So that's what I'm telling people that uh, for the most part, we travel into three to five countries per year. That's real. And then, you know, 
and then next year we're going to kick it off, uh, set it off, uh, Kenya Roots and Culture Tour. That's uh, mm -hmm. fourth to the fourteenth. And uh, then we're going to head back to Ghana and do our May schedule. That's May 24th to June 5th. Then we're going to take the summer break off. And then we're going to uh, close out the year in uh, Tanzania, November 20th to December 1st, our Roots and Culture journey. And that's the schedule for next year, family. Uh, those are three uh, journeys. Yeah. And enjoy paradise. And yes, uh, for the first time, we have two countries in East Africa and then there's one in West Africa. But that's the best parts of Africa. If anybody just don't know what to do and they wanted to go to Africa, uh, I would definitely always say start off in West Africa. Ghana is ideal. Senegal and Gambia is not bad. Uh, but then when you move over to East Africa, you know, Tanzania is definitely an incredible highlight. And when you're doing Tanzania, you're talking about Arusha, Dar es Salaam, and then you're talking about Zanzibar Island, the island of paradise. When we're doing sunset cruise, you know, you're out there doing snorkeling, you're out there enjoying this beautiful, incredible beach to where you, if you, if you, you know, if you're waking up and you're not thinking about what's going on in the world and you step out there, you could swear you're in Jamaica. You know, you could swear you're on the north side in Jamaica, whether it's Montego Bay, Negril, or Ocho Rios. I will compare Zanzibar Island on that level. You know what I mean? Uh, so... You know, we have been able to figure out how to find and enjoy paradise in Africa. And the way you do that is also exploring because it, w it wasn't until November of 2020 that I went to Tanzania and it just, and then I went there for four straight times. You know, we took a break this year because we had to get another schedule in, uh, which is Egypt. Uh, and then, but that's the experience, family. You make your way around. And uh, one thing I will say about Africa, it offers everything. There's no other parts of the entire world that offer you everything. Uh, all demographics, all different regions, all different climates. And then ultimately, you know, you, you around, you're talking about a continent of at least 80 to 90% black people. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you have your connections there. So we're just doing this family and, you know, I'm working on a new schedule for 2026. But what I'm going to show you is this. Once we scroll down, brother, this is it right here. 35. Well, before I even show that to you, these are all links, uh, especially these right here, videos and photos, all on your popular social networks. And then, you know, one thing that we don't ever run out of is videos. We don't ever run out of pictures of videos. There's no point I'm just out of pictures of videos. Uh, so I just finished uploading the last ones in South Africa and I'm about to upload the last ones in, uh, in basically Liberia, then Morocco. And then you know, I have so much more to show people of Ghana and then so much more. Then all of these are uh, Facebook group page. But when you come down, brother, this is the highlight right here. 35 tour groups, photos from 2006 to 2024. So we literally showing you. And then what you can see is Bomani and all of these. These are not Photoshop. That's myself right here. Usually you see me on the left or the right or in the middle. And you can see my, usually I'm probably one of the darkest person. So it's easy to pick, pick, pick me out, you know, amongst all chocolate folks. And, you know, you'll see my distinctive look. Um, Liberia. And these are all, and as you can see, these are all group photos with our Africa for the Africans t-shirt. You know what I mean? You know, you, I've never created the same t-shirt. Like every single t-shirt that you see is completely different from the next one. And we got a red here, then we got a blue, then what we got right here, the black. You go down some more, then we got the white. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the green. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then go up here some more, you got a different version of red. And then you got a gold version. So all the favorite colors that we had, we like red, black, green, and gold, you know? And Liberia has a similar colors to the US uh, flag. So we just created a blue, a, you know, blue uh, t-shirt and just mix other colors in white, you know, which is uh, white and red. So scrolling down family and now, that's what you'll see, just nothing but group photos in harmony. And then this is one of my other classic black t-shirts. So for the last uh, few years, I've just been mainly this doing these incredible t-shirts and they look better than anything else we have created. And also when you're talking about, when you're talking about tour program, this is the book right here. This is the tour book that we have right here. This is, oh, like a, this is an 88 page book. And then you know the incredible part of this situation is that uh, what you have is literally uh digital books yeah i know you know you talking about mr technology himself so you know we have we figure all these things out way ahead of time 
Uh, so I'm going to show it back to you on this uh, screen share that we have. Let me stop this for a second and get us connected to screen sharing. Where did this thing disappear to? That's why. All right, so the website is going to play. We're going to share it. So once you're on the website, you scroll down, and what you see is Africa Tour Books, the Journey of a Lifetime Program Guide. And let me know how cool this we is right here. Another black man to show us the this, way. This oh, is cool to show us the way. In those days, we did it. We did. That's Malcolm speaking right there. So you're going to hear some good music. You may hear some empowering Malcolm and some Marcus Garvey speech. But this is the list of Africa tour books. Uh, it's not every single last one of them, but uh, you know, we put up a different variety of them over the last several years. Uh, the books have been getting printed since 2007, but these are on a whole different level. So, so those are the last two journeys, brother. And these are digital tour books. Once you click it, you can download a PDF copy or you can click on it as a flip book. Let me give you a good example right here. Look at this right here. Uh, isn't that awesome? Oh, yeah, that's nice. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So these are things that's like you see the, the music and the slideshow um, and all the social pages. So it's like when you look at other people, you know, whoever else is out there, look at the kind of work they put in. And compare it because one thing about people like myself everything is based on my work ethics and based on what i can show you prove to you and which is everything that i talk about is a hundred percent based on experience in africa you will never hear me talk about anything that's not based on experience in africa i've been traveling to the continent for 20 straight years so all i have is experience and then i've been in the world of technical support uh, for the last 20 years so there's not much that we can't design you know, so when you see these uh, websites, you don't see people with digital books. And I showed you the, the regular books. I got fresh new pens, um, incredible postcard for whether it's for Bomani Technology or Africa for the Africans, and then all the colorful T-shirts. And then we have the tour bags. You know? So when you're rolling with us and connecting with us, we, you know, we're giving you a piece of history because you're talking about an operation that I've stand the test of time, that I've stand through from Ebola, world financial crisis, COVID-19. Brother, nothing has stopped us. And, you know, and then also, you know, then definitely, you know, the black devils and the haters, they can't stop you. They can't stop me. So, you know, no, sir. Uh, we're no, sir. on a divine mission that's uh, been, you know, that our ancestors have, you know, have empowered us to, to make it work. And that's what we're doing. And, you know, you know, we're not here to, you know, we're not here to sing anybody's tune other than our own tune. And this is us right here. As a people, so yeah, brother, uh, let me uh flip back to the main page uh because I'm gonna scroll down to these uh group photos, and then when you scroll down, all you're gonna see is the time go by. So that's you saw 2024, and then I can tell you, family, think about what was going on in this time of the world. This is all during the COVID 19 era, right? Wow, <laughs> non stop, you can't non stop. You're like, how did this guy get out here during the COVID 19 era? Hey, we follow protocols. We come together with a game plan, and we keep it we keep it strong. Now, some of the groups initially, you know, they were a little smaller, but you know, because people, you know, they have real fear. You know, whenever the media, you know, whenever you, you know, you go watch your YouTube or go watch your TV, it, you know, everything is scare tactics. Uh, people pumping fear into you, right? Fear into you, just like you know, people may be pumping fear into you that oh, this uh, this racist guy Donald Trump, he's gonna He's going to, he's going to cause this and certain things. And it's like, I mean, I, you know, I'm not into the whole politics things, but it's like, 
if someone is telling you this thing about one person, more than likely it's not true, and more than likely you need to think outside the box. Because why would why would people consistently be on and pumping things into your mindset? Hate this person, this person is no good, and so on. And usually it's the opposite, you know, and things like that. Uh, so I'm telling folks that uh, when this time frame was going on, it was so much negative energy out there where some people literally lock themselves into their house. Yes, sir. For years, not, not just like months, for like years. Some people yeah. finally started hearing back from after five, six years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, brother? Some of them are still locked in. Some of them are still locked in. And, and the reality of it, brother, some people are still going through those things. But you're telling people like, you know, be fearless, be exceptional, be great, uh, you know, compete, challenge the system, a status quo, be who you need to be. Don't try to copy other people. And that's what we have done. You know, we have brought an energy into this game where we have our own style and our own operation. And if people want to know how I get this thing done, I pace myself. I'm first of all, I'm a technology professional and we can get anything done. This whole space is technology. You, you've never seen so much computers and stuff like that in one space, in a small space like that. And we get things done. But yeah, scrolling down again, you, you, you see it here, Tanzania, Senegal, Gambia, Ghana. And then you come down and keep on strolling down and then you know, in some years we did multiple countries. I'm gonna show you the one of my favorite one and was the biggest group ever. It's 43 of us here, November 2017, Ghana, Togo, Benin. And then also that's say 2017, right? So then you scroll down a little bit more. That's Brazil right there, July 2017. You scroll down some more. That's Ghana right there, 2017. And you scroll down again. That's Ethiopia, 2017. So that's like three countries right there within like two months. <laughs> yeah. And then from 2016 on, we basically just did one journey a year. So when you're telling people you have stepped your game up, and it was definitely difficult doing this time, doing one a year. So you can imagine doing three, four, five countries a year. The kind of skills and the kind of organization that you have to have. Yes, yes see, this, is a, this is a single journey, so let's go by. Only year that I physically didn't have a journey it was uh, 2010. It just the world financial crisis threw me off, so I ended up just rerouting the, uh, the 2010 journey October to July 2011, and did the first summer journey that we've done. And I just got back from July 2024 in Ghana, and I'll say I'll never do that again, because uh, I remember just like this journey. You know, when we go to tropical places, we want to get in the water, we want to get in the ocean, the pool. And it's a little chilly there in July, so that's why I don't, you know, really like that. I want to be when I'm in, when I'm in Africa. I want to be in hot Africa, right? <laughs> I want to be in Africa where it's and so, you know. And South Africa is another place that throw me off in November, December. I have to find a time where it's just like hot the whole time there. Yes, sir. And then you scroll down, brother. This is the end of it right there. Okay. The Roots and Culture Tour, December two thousand six. And you can okay. tell that picture is old because it's old technology. It's not vibrant and bright like the latest photos that we have with these incredible cameras. That's us right there in Elmina, Ghana, right there in African Holocaust dungeons where the ancestors spoke to me and said, you know, reconnect your people to their ancestral land and to their ancestral struggles. And that's wow. what our ancestors blessed me um, in, in those two straight years, 2004 to 2006, and empowered me to carry on this mission. So that's what I've been doing from 2006. After doing spending two years doing all the research, fact finding missions, and then putting the, the, the foundation in place. Uh, so that's where we at next family. Egypt Roots and Culture Journey, November 20th to December 2nd. The journey continues. And for those who hear me talk a lot about the uh, the, the videos, all you gotta do is click on the YouTube channel. Once you click on it, like I can say up there 4,400 videos. So you click on videos and you'll see all, all aspects of these videos. They just keep on going down and down. And it's like almost every few days or like basically every few, you know, few days you've seen videos after videos and new videos. And I still got a whole lot more videos to upload. Yeah. And we're talking about the root. These are mainly just roots and culture video. But then when you click on the shorts, I've, I've been able to use the shorts to show some of the nightlife uh, social videos. And then I got the playlist here. 
Uh, this is the one I was showing you, Social Nightlife in Africa with Bomani. You know, as we talk about Africa, the black man paradise, just giving you a taste of it. You know, and these are just short videos so you can't see everything else is going on because I refuse just to have a camera recording when I'm trying to have the best time of my life. Uh, and then these are some of the shorts. Uh, some of them may be a little more provocative for some people than others. But, um, you, know, you know, I got to give my brothers what they want. And what they want is they want to see, you know, they want to see some showtime, some 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 partying, some beautiful ladies. And we kept it as reasonable as possible. Um, some parts are showing a little much skin, but, you know, it's, you know, what, what it is, uh, you'll see worse things, you know, but... Um, Dancing is an art. I mean, and uh, I enjoy recording um, sisters just dancing, whether they're twerking or whether they're just doing some nice cultural dancing. And talking about cultural dancing, I still, to this day, brother, I have more African cultural dancing than party videos. These are the least amount of videos that I have, is uh, Shonafulu Nightlife. I have about, I have at least about a good 200 videos. With, Did you ever ponder? With drumming, dancing, um, <laughs> from... From people flipping fires in the air, jumping across the, the space, and you know, and so on. So, again, uh, but this is what people end up judging for. Like, well, you have some provocative, exact videos. Well, those are a few videos. What about all the educational videos I have? There's nobody else in the entire world that have more videos about the African Holocaust than myself. And I uh, and I dare somebody to put their money with their mouth is and show me more videos that you have recorded and created dealing with the African Holocaust. And then on top of that, when you talk about investment and business videos, so I'm telling people there's no weakness in our game, but we don't limit ourselves. Yeah. And nowadays, that's the world you're in now. You're in a modern day partying world where people, you know, when you go on TikTok, that's what people are watching. You know, people watching somebody dancing and they playing some music. But then I'm showing them the Bomani version. But yes, brother, uh, once you scroll down some more, you see multiple playlists. This is all of this is. A lot of Ghana videos, Liberia, Morocco, South Africa, Tanzania, Ghana, Senegal, Gambia. You scroll down and you see some more. I mean, and when you look at it, brother, like this one say 176 videos, 113, 174. This one, I was on fire right? this year, Ghana, May, June, 2022, 239. <laughs> you know, go to Black Star. We always got videos. I'm about to upload the last set of uh, updated videos because it's been a while since we went to Ghana on the land. I'm going to upload some more of that. And you, you scroll back down, these are older videos, South Africa, November 2019, Brazil, 2017, Ethiopia, 2017, and my historical Now Valley Civilization video, April 2004. That's me 20 years younger. Looks scary, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, hey, that's a blessing. ...that I have is Africa Tours Investment and Conference Calls. Got at least about good 15 years of nonstop conference call, like almost every month for 15 straight years. And they're all there. Um, then, you know, we got controversial videos and debates. You know, this is the show that uh, we used to do, uh, uh, a different version of Pan Africanism towards uh, nationhood. Uh, and long videos, uh, multi more multiple playlists. And then again, the social nightlife videos. I got one of the best videos that we've ever uh, put up, uh, which is European world economic domination and its impact on Africa and African people. Uh, so I'm telling you, brother, you know, it's uh, using, you know, organizing a movement and pushing all elements of these things to share with our people. I got one of my RBG music festival. You know, you may see me at Malcolm X Fest and this festival. So when people don't see me every year at the same place, I was like, yo, we have no limitations. You know what I mean? Uh, we don't just sit around and do one or two things. We create a whole consciousness of our movement, a whole practicality. You know, and even when I'm telling people about the technology we have created, we have set that game up on a whole different level. You know, because ultimately we look at the build a town and we want to empower the town and create nothing but technical people, administrative people, business people, create an opportunity for a young generation where you're using your hands and your mind to you know, really connect. You know, the world that we live in and to where you're more competitive, you're not, you know, in a situation where, you know, you have to depend on everybody else to do everything for yourself. And that's one of the things I'm always encouraging a generation of people to to don't waste your life. Uh, literally, you know, when, once you once you hit, you know, 16, 17, 18, you got to get out there and start building your career, building your trade, building your skills. 
You know, um, a lot of times I'm meeting people 50, 40, 50 years old, and I'm like, what have you done all your life? I mean, you didn't learn no skills. You didn't learn any trade. You didn't learn anything. You know, so you just basically want to be a glorified slave because a glorified slave is someone that's literally, you know, you just, you just work in a job just to work a job to make some money. Now, someone with a vision, you work in a job, you're going to learn those skills and you're going to build your empire. You're going to learn those skills and you're going to contribute with other people and then you're going to compete. It's a difference. And I'm not saying things to this, like upset or frustrate people or, or talk down to people. But I'm saying, if you have gotten so far in life to where you don't have any skills and any true talent, even if you just have a degree, that's not enough. It's like you're basically agreed for to be a part of the slave system, you know, part of being on a plantation. And some of you Negroes have even taken it to a different level to where you're competing to be the next house Negro to push, <laughs> push, the, the, to push the devil's agenda, the white devil's agenda. <laughs> and the white devil's agenda is that they need some kind of head man in charge. So it's always some kind of Negro that you have on a plantation that's always competing to be the house Negro. You know, so he can feel good about himself going and say and and tell his you know, tell his white girlfriend that yeah man, uh, you know they finally put me in charge man. I'm in charge of all these niggas man. I gotta keep them in check man. I gotta crack the whip on them, and you know hey, that's um you know, hey, that's something. About, about that, but it's like it goes back to Malcolm X, the house Negro and the field Negro. It's just that these house niggas have taken it to a different level. They realize that you know the best thing that they can do you know is this butt dance and coon and you know. So literally what you're going to see them out there doing, and most of them are, most of them have a title, especially the, 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 the top level one, they have a title called an entertainer or the sports and entertainment. <laughs> Speak on it. Yeah. You know, as Speak matter, on it, brother. I don't, don't want to upset, upset you and talk about your people and, you know, and, you know, and the flags and the honor and that's fine. Man. You gotta do what you yeah. have to do, but don't convince me that Man. don't convince me, like, you know what I mean? It's a, it's what it is. It's it's still a part of the, the savior system. You're gonna your best athletes are gonna be black folks, man. And then, and then you know you get a few of them. You know some the ones that are not patriotic, they leave their ass back in America. You know, right. even some of them have the best talents. You know, what I'm saying you you was watching. You know, for those who are watching USA basketball, you know they had some of the best people, but you know some of them the best ones also got left out because they didn't agree to play that plantation uh, house negro. You know situation you know um and stood up for themselves but th but they had more than enough anyway so if you if you're one of the ones that are the best and then you don't agree to that they're just gonna leave you off <laughs> you know what i'm saying and they have more than enough negroes that's gonna come up and coon and butt dance mm, and, mm, oh, the so house negroes somebody in the, in, the, in the in the background to do the the, the, the famous butt dancing you know what i'm saying wow. and them some of the moves man, and saw a smile with the the big smile and everything and that's literally the uh, we have people that are a modern day version of that, and they're fine with it because you know the reality of it is they can live in peace. They can do certain uh, things as long as you push that agenda, yeah. You know? uh, so we're not pushing any agenda, fam. And what we're doing is building what we need to build as a people and be competitive. You know, I mean, that's I've, I've been doing this for you know, for the last twenty years, and I've been unapologetic about it. And I'm, some people, like someone like myself, probably could be making a, a half a million dollars a year doing certain things as long as I'm a good Negro. And I literally just, um, you know, just do what the master told me to do. But when you want to build something wow. to where, because the thing of it is, a lot of times, even when you go that route, it doesn't necessarily put things in place for your generation. It may make you wealthy and famous and so on. Right. But it's like when you're a real Pan-Africanist and when you're a real black man and you're really about your people, you know, you're going to do something to make sure your children, your child, your family, your people have something and you're going to put that work into building an empire. And the goal is to compete. Like, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be one with these people. I'm trying to compete against them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to compete to where you have your own factories, you have your own enterprise, your own business corporation. And, you know, and you realize that at the end of the day, you know, you'd love to do some of these things in America, but it's, it's one of the situations where you, we all, we have all seen it throughout the period of time, you know, it's like you can have white empowerment, you can have Hispanic empowerment, you know, you can have Indian empowerment, you can have different Asian empowerment, you can have all the empowerments in the world, but one thing you cannot have. And if you could, then we wouldn't be getting sabotaged, people burning down our communities and our towns. 
So what we what we have decided to do is that we're not even gonna challenge the system like that and, and build anything in America. You know, we, we're just gonna get this money and use it to invest in Africa. So our goal is to build our enterprise, build our empire and African continent. And now that the issue that I end up having with dealing with is tribalism. With tribalism and uh you know the colonial mindset of people, you know what I mean? And I'm not gonna lie about it. That is a rough struggle to where you just end up just comparing racism to tribalism. But at the end oh. of the day, if we're to have something as a people, you're not gonna it's not gonna work here, it's not gonna happen. The powers to be, and especially the house Negroes, they'd be the first one, like, you know what, he's trying to build this place, and he's saying that, you know, he wants only black people to come there so they can build black empowerment, and I'm telling them, you know, and, you know, and they're running, running back, and they're just relaying all the messages and telling people what you're doing, because yeah. they feel like, you know, they feel like if you build something, you you know, something black, they you, you may not want them or whatever, but it's a it's a terrible mindset, because it's like, we can never live and continue to live in the shadows of anybody else. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. my goal is, yeah, I mean, I appreciate my time in America and I'm, you know, you're doing what you're doing, but at the same time too, the goal is to use the resources, connect. You go home. Together and you go home. That black empire. And it's like, you know, it's not just going to Africa and say, I'm just going to Africa and you just hang out with a bunch of local people. You have to build it to where you get some of your best people to come with you so y'all can work together and, you know, because at the end of the day, you deal with a young population. So as an elder brother, um, dealing with a population of a you know, very high percentage of uh, people under 21 years old, you, you have to step up and want to be the leadership. So the skills, the talents, your intelligence that you have built, you have to transfer the skills, transfer the blessing. That's right. Transfer those things. And if you don't, what you're doing is you're not properly setting up things to compete. You know, because at the end of the day, too much of our lives depend on the rest of the world when the rest of the world really depends on us. I mean, let me give you a good example. If all the black folks tomorrow morning decide to not show up at Atlanta airport, ain't nothing going on in the rest of the world. No yeah. planes are flying. No planes yeah. are being loaded. I mean, it just, every aspect of what goes on in that airport is run by black people. And if they decide not to show up, it, the game is over. That's how important we are as a people, but you would never know that you're that important because you know you have not been empowered to understand that your your right. work or even understand that you are a black enterprise and you have built great business across America. Well, That's you know, right. you have a continent called Africa. It's whether you consider that your brother's brothers directly, it's a black continent with people of your same values, the same, you know, your same history, your same culture, and at the same time too. It would be beneficial for you to empower a brother that looked like you to do something great and empower his people and literally just put yourself also in another level to where now you have an international corporation. Now you have access to a tropical land where, you, where, where when you go, it's always tropically beautiful, nice and the weather is great, beaches is beautiful, you can grow anything you want to grow. It's benefits in that, but it's also something that we talk about at the beginning of the topic, Africa is paradise if you build the infrastructure. That's right. That's right. I got another one. Africa is a black man's paradise. You know? and, and how do you get an African princess? Because that's what you need. You know, you need a princess to build your empire with also. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so a struggle and rough as Africa is. And, you know, it, I get worn out uh, too, man. It's been, you can imagine 20 years of, of, of a fight going back and forth to the continent and just marking the property up. You get burned out, you get worn out. But at the same time too, no matter how much times you get kicked down, pushed around, you get back up and you fight. Uh, because you have to think about the future. The future can never be here. Um, as much as I love being an American, I love uh, the opportunities, we, we're gonna have to, you know, we're gonna have to start planning. I'm not saying anybody can run and move to Africa. We're gonna have to plan to where you're building that empire there to where regardless of whoever stays here, now you have, now you have another force to deal with. You know what I mean? Now you have another back end because you have to just, you know, it's the same situation I tell people, you know, with the Chinese people. China is that continent for Chinese people and the African diaspora is united and organized. So you're not going to run into any problems wherever you go. But us as a people, uh, people have no respect for us. And then people, you know, it's like, sometimes you're not accepted African, you're not accepted here. So you're confused. You're like, where am I accepted at? 
And I, what I'm saying to people is that you're accepted in Africa, but you have to build it. And you know, and when you when you're building whatever you're building, you have a young generation in place that you have to transfer the skills, transfer the opportunities, put them in a place of empowerment. And if we don't do these things, then the paradise that we want to build is not going to happen. You know, so, and like I mentioned to you, fam, not everybody can run to Africa, but we can all play a part in it. You know, come on vacation, come and travel, come and experience, uh, come and uh, invest some of your money, come and make some donations. Uh, everyone can do a little bit and you're encouraging everyone because when you don't do, when not enough of us doing it, then people like myself get burned out and frustrated. Come and help us look out for each other, help us, you know, hold each other down. But brother, I've said it. Uh, I've said a whole lot, man. Uh, let me know what you want to chime into. Oh yeah, well, you know, brother, it's basically what uh, we've been talking about. Africa is paradise for uh, our people, specifically. Um, tonight we're talking about paradise for the black man, and it is like like you were saying, and like I'm saying, um, you have to. go prepared, have, you know, have your money right and um, get the right team and you'll be successful there. And exactly what you were saying as well, we have to um, pass down our knowledge and wisdom to the younger generation. And I believe we will do that when we go there. Um, we're going to pass down our skills and uh, you know, our skill set and um, knowledge and wisdom and all the understanding that we have, um, you know, attained here in the States. So that's what it's all about. So um, it's all about that. And, um, you know, just going back into our land. And uh, like you were saying, I want to add on to that, that uh, we're, we'll never have, you know, um, This will never be, United States will never be our land. We'll never be able to have uh, in United States what we can have on the continent. And that's freedom. Um, freedom to live in peace, not worried about, you know, um, being harassed and, you know, uh, beat down by the system. It's freedom. It's freedom on a whole different level. So I encourage our people to take the voyage to uh, the motherland, to Africa, and uh, invest there. Invest in your future, because Africa is our future, and um, it's our land. That's where we were stolen from, and that's where a lot of us are going back home to. So, um Bomani, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I've got to take care of some business early tomorrow, but it's been a pleasure and uh, I will be linking up with you very soon. Uh, we definitely have to do this again very soon. But brother, I'm getting ready to lay it down. But hey, man, this has been great. Um, and uh, keep up the good work, brother. And um We'll have to do this real soon. And brother, yes, um, enjoy Egypt. Man, that's going to be outstanding. Uh, man, the pyramids and all that history. You know, I'm a big, um, I'm a historian of African uh, history. So, man, that's exciting. I haven't been to Egypt yet. So put up lots of videos. I already know you're going to do that. Man, I can't wait to get over there. I'll have to get on one of those trips uh, with you to Egypt in the near future, brother. But man, that's going to be amazing. And me being a historian, man, I just, ah, gosh, I can only imagine, you know, um, the time you're going to have there. And I know you're really deep into our history as well. Yeah. So, man, that is going to be an amazing uh, trip, brother. When we're talking yes, about sir. everything, people have never seen me record as much as I'm about to record. Yeah. You know? yes. And so you, you when you look at the documentation, like you see in all aspects of it, because all we do is step our game up and look always look at you now. And I've been looking to get modern day footage of what we did in Egypt 20 years ago. And I can do it wow. with all my new technology of equipment that I have here. We have nothing but incredible equipment. 
and uh, I get some new um, additional, some, you know, some new stuff before we actually go. So whatever is new out there, you'll get. And I'm telling people by the time we share on videos with you and you play it on your 4K, 8K TV, you literally feel like you can walk into the pitch and touch the pyramids. Like, you know, like you're right there. So for those who live vicariously to us, I'm trying to create more documentation to where you can, you, you can literally just, you know, it, it'll be like a VR system where you just uh, put on your VR and you feel like you're there. That's, that's, the, that's the kind of reality I want to bring. I want to bring, bring like a virtual reality, real, real, real feel of you being in Africa. It's like, you know, we walking on Zanzibar um, Island on the beach and then you feel like you could just like, you know, be careful because we don't want you running your, you know, damaging your TV, feeling like you can walk into <laughs> picture we know we haven't gotten there yet <laughs> in technology you know one day we'll get there to where you know you just walk to the tv and you're in paradise <laughs> or if not uh then you can at least have a you know idea and a feel so that's what we're doing family trying to give you the realest feel of africa and trying to give you a balanced feel not here to paint any kind of rosy picture uh trying to also let you know to deal with the reality and that's why i explain uh the situation of dealing with from going from racism to dealing with tribalism, both two of the worst things that you can ever deal with as a person, you know, but, you know, and, and I share that with you to let you know that it's real, but if you want it, what you got to do, brother, build it. Yeah. Yeah. Build it. And but, really just go over and, you know, take back what's been taken from us. You know, that's our land. So I was talking to you about that a couple of days ago, Bomani. we just have to go back and reclaim and uh, take what's ours, you know? And of course, you know, you have to have a plan and a goal and some money. We know that. And but um, effectively and we have that. And find the best people to con the continent. Or oh, yeah. To work with oh, yeah. We end up dealing with coons that are there because trust me, family, it's hard <laughs> to get to. Don't think you yeah, they are. yeah, they are. Yeah, Don't yeah, they are. America and get away yeah. from the situation. It's yeah. done that way <laughs> right? Ghana, yeah. South America South yeah. America, the coons are there it's just yeah. a colonized mindset or yeah. slave mindset of black folks yeah. so the ones that are also about their life gotta keep it real so my good brother gotta go and everything but we're gonna do this again family and we're gonna keep on connecting and um, me and my good brother gonna, gonna be there in Ghana he's gonna be doing some great things and we'll be doing some great things and we're gonna connect our energy on another level because like I said family uh, when you get kicked down or when you, you know, when you get sabotaged or when people get in the way, it's not the end of the journey. It's a struggle that you deal with. You go, right. through, you go to and you get back up. That's right. You, know, you overcome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, sir. You overcome. Run away from a fight to come back and fight stronger. You know? And that's what we'll do. So when you see us back in America, it's like, okay, we're going back to the drum board. Let's go back to Africa and figure it out. And that's what we've been doing. And that's why we can literally share more with you than any other people on this planet about Africa. And you'll get meaningful connection of what we're talking about. Now you're gonna uh you're gonna in, in some cases you you know you're gonna get that balance of what's real and what's not real and things like that. So that's what we had to do, family. So for those who are looking for consultation, looking to actually just even just have a general talk. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, my information is you know, is available. It's all over these networks, and uh, you just reach out. Um, and then you know you're on the website. Phone numbers, email addresses there. Reach out and connect. Um, you need help with visas and things like that. Connect. Uh, we got you. Uh, we'll make it work for you. And uh, it's something that you know we've dedicated 20 years of our life. So I mean, it's not that easy to dedicate just a few years of your life to doing anything black because most people like they start thinking selfish and about themselves. You know, but every time I go to Africa, you know, we always take, always, always at one or two orphanages in school. We're always contributing to black owned business. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of people out there talking about black power and pan Africanism, but you got to show me what you're doing. That's so black power and pan Africanism. You got to show me what the connections and the impact that you have made on the lives of other black people. Other than that, you know, it's just easy to talk a bunch of stuff. So, Baka, we don't, we don't, we're going to keep on stepping the game up, brother. And, um, for yes, the sir. Fake uh, pan Africanists and the people who just talk of many stuff, you're not gonna be able to, you know, you're gonna have to be able. We're stepping the game up, so you're gonna have to do a lot more than just go to Africa with your photo op and your your rest of your Hollywood crew and things. Like that. <laughs> you do That's more right. That. That's right. 
That's you know? right. That's yeah. right, brother. As a matter of fact, I'm about to just reach out to people like myself so we work together so we can build some of these technical institutes for our children in Africa. That That's we, right. We can have a competing world of talented black people, you know, because people keep on talking about Europe is going to fall, this place is going to fall. Ain't nothing going to fall because you're not doing anything to compete. So, you know, and that's what we're about. But I would say this. Africa is the future. And um, we're going to be right on the ground floor, Bomani. So. Um, building the empire. It's a beautiful thing. Exactly. So, brother, just keep doing what you're doing because, um, oh, man, I can't wait to get back over there full time. And, um, man, that's when everything, you know, just takes off. You know, when you're back on the continent and you're making things happen and um, it's a beautiful thing. So, brother, just continue to do what you're doing and uh, it's all going to work out because, like I said, this is it's our destiny to go back, you know, and I'll say this a thousand times, you know, um, our people are going to be heading back over there. Anyway, eventually, I believe that we're going to we're going to have an exodus out of the United States um, and all the nations where we were taken captive, you know, um, by the colonizers. So that's coming. You know, it's biblical. And, um, you know, you can just see it. You can see everything is leading up to that. Us eventually getting some form of reparations and then going back into Africa. And then from there, we're gonna have to build. But you have brothers like us that are going back sooner, that are just making a way for ourselves and building. And I just can't wait to get back to the land and be on you know, uh, the land there, you know, taking care of business and um, just enjoying, you know, as they say, living your best life, you know, so. That's what I'm looking forward to, my brother. And um, the best is yet to come for us because, you know, um, we've decided to go back to the land of our her of our heritage and our ancestors and our true lineage, you know. So we're going to have a lot easier. We're going to have it a lot easier than these brothers, like you were talking about earlier, that are going over to Brazil and these other nations where, Brazil, you know, um, we're just not. We're, that's not our land. I'm sorry. It's not. So it's not going to be, they're not going to have it like we're going to have it because that's our land. So I, I'll say that a thousand times and some of our people get it. Some of them won't, but who cares? I, will never get um, it. I have it. I have it. And um, there's going to be a remnant of our people that are going to get it. And they're going to have it a lot easier and um, they're going to be lining up with you know um man who a heritage and a history and um man a land that is truly theirs so you can't beat that my brother but hey i'm gonna leave on that note because like i said i've got to get up early tomorrow but hey brother black power and uh salama you have an excellent night my brother and i'll be getting back with you real soon my brother Absolutely, brother. You take care, family. The journey continues, and um, I'm on standby. Link me so we can connect. And uh, we're looking for another brilliant, beautiful 20 years and generational moves. You know what I mean? Because that's what we're thinking about. So, Baka, appreciate you, brother. And this is Hi, brother. Uh, Africa for the Africans, Bomani Technology, Black Star Pan African Community, our three incredible business enterprise. Uh, that we have contributed to the movement. So the journey continues, family. It's all about nation building. Let's keep it strong. Salama.